from New Zealand. I just thought I'd give everybody a tour of my new camper van, Van Gogh. I decided to name it that because it's a color of rumors that lets me see the starry nights of New Zealand. And because when you press on the pedal, the engine in this thing really makes that van go. <laughs> so I'm going to flip the camera around so I can give you a little walk around tour and show you what it looks like. So here's a close-up of how it looks from the outside. This is a Toyota Estima Emina, which I'm going to paint over all the letters on both sides so that um, with proper paint, that's just colored in with a Sharpie marker for now. But I'm gonna paint that in eventually with the color match blue paint. Um, this Toyota Estima Emina model um, was called a Toyota Privia in the United States. And this, I believe, is a 1994. And um, it's definitely got its age showing. No, it's 1995, because it's 24 years old right now. But you can see it's got uh, worn paint and plenty of chips and some misalignment on uh, doors and things like that. Three of the four doors always have trouble closing and uh, the light tries to tell me that the doors are still open even when they're actually closed. So I always have to go around slamming all the doors. On the back here, you can see the model is the X model, which is more of the luxury model. Um, there was a similar model made in New Zealand and other parts of the world that was called a Lucida instead of an Emina. And uh, that one was a little bit narrower <laughs> on the overall width. So this is considered the bigger luxury model. Also, you'll see it is what New Zealand calls uh, certified self-contained, which means that it technically has a toilet and uh, facilities for cooking inside and washing. So um, that is an exterior picture. Um, you'll also see there was a uh, little arm off the back that did have a rear view reversing mirror, but that fell off on the first day I owned it <laughs> somewhere on the road but I thought it actually blocked too much of the back view, so I didn't like it anyways, and I'm glad that it got rid of itself. So let me take you for a look first into um, the main cabin, or I should say the front cabin before we get into the main part. Um, also, I'll point out both sides have these rain reflectors, which I think is a must have for a camper van. It allows you to have your windows open, especially when you're inside at night and not get everything all condensated and steamy inside. Get your fresh oxygen and not have the rain come in. It's also great when you're driving so the rain doesn't come in. So when I bought this thing, it was extremely dirty and it still gets really dirty pretty much as soon as you drive around somewhere with the windows open. You just end up getting this road dust accumulating on the dash. But um, all the dash parts are original. Um, it has very little wear for its age and for other ones that I've looked at on both the inside and the outside. There's actually not a lot of wear for the age of this model. And everything actually still works, including electronics like um, it's turned off right now, but it has a clock at the top um, and the lights and all that still work. And that was a big thing that I noticed other models didn't have. Um, what I have replaced since I bought it is the radio. The original radio was taking up this whole space and it was with a tape cassette player in it and a CD. So perhaps the luxury version of this model at the time um, was the fact that it originally had a CD player with the tape deck. Um, but I've replaced that with this new Kenwood that is a Bluetooth and USB and headphone jack. Um, so it plays any kind of music for modern music today. Also still has the um, working, albeit flimsy, <laughs> uh, cup holder, which is very nice on the road. Um, and luckily that hasn't broken because that's probably the flimsiest thing in here. Um, I also really like the glove box is massive and has cup holders. Um, there is a secret compartment down here that I've never seen on a vehicle before. I don't actually have anything in it yet, but I thought that was pretty cool. And it has another secret compartment that I only know because I've toured a lot of these vans and on older, I should say later models, they labeled this the hot cool box because underneath there is the air vent for the heat and air conditioning that will keep whatever you put in there hot or cold, supposedly. I haven't really tried it yet. I've got my first aid kit in there, the uh, you know baggie for the radio and uh, uh, hand wipes and uh, also hair bands for myself to keep the wind, keep the hair out of my face. 
Um, I also got my binoculars in there. It's a really deep compartment, so nice to have my binoculars nice and handy. This is nice and handy to put your phone real quick if you need it. But I'll show you what I really love to do with my phone in a second on the driver's side. This is kind of my center cockpit here, um, and uh, I like to keep the tissues handy because I can reach that while I'm driving or while I'm sleeping. Also, say hi to Doge. That was my first um, purchase for the van. It's my van dog. He's a very good boy. Um, it's a really three-dimensional looking pillow, and I happened to be walking past a store that sold all these pillows right after I bought the van. I was like, I'll never walk by this store again because it was in another city, and it's like, I gotta have that. Um, also, we do have two, uh, we, well, technically sunroof and moonroof. So both the front and back um, can see the sky and have windows that open. Um, some other things I like about this side is I keep, uh, you know, hand sanitizer there. So it's good for front or back. And this light, which is good for front or back, which also comes out, which is really good for like looking under the bed for things. And it has three modes. It has a bright, a dim, and a flashing party mode, which I don't know what you'd use that for, but it's nice to have the dim option. And I'll show you what that is when we do the back of the van in a minute. Um, but let's go over to the other side and look at what's on the driver's side. That's one of the doors that doesn't close properly. Now in the front, it does have some, probably the biggest ding on it is right there. I've had to do a lot of repairs just even to the windshield wipers. I had to replace the blades and has some sort of weird design where instead of your spray coming from little nozzles right here and spraying up, the spray actually comes through a hose up through here and then comes out here. So no matter where you're wiping when the spray comes out, you'll have the water right in front of your blade. But the problem is it's so old that of course the rubber on the hose has disconnected on the back side here and I've had to wrap black electrical tape around it to keep the hose from flopping all over the place. Um, I also had a problem when I first bought it or right after I first bought it that for some reason the metal part of the blade was flopping over every time it got up here and it scratched glass. So I had, that's why I had to replace that. So that was one of the repairs I had to make, one of the many repairs I had to make. Now on this side, um, I like I've got a little thing here. I, don't, I haven't really put much in it, but you could put your phone in there if you wanted to, kind of hide that. So while I'm driving, what I love about it, it's a really comfortable seat. Um, it has something they call overdrive mode, which I'm not sure if I can get it to focus. There it is, overdrive. So you push that button or not. And it's like a turbo mode or speed mode. Um, it allows you to um, accelerate in a lower gear so you can go up hills or uh, overtake people on the road. So I like that. Um, pretty much it's got like standard dash dial stuff there, I think. Nothing too special to call out. Um, but what I like to do with my phone, I've got the USB charger. I've run the cord, and that's a mic for the radio for the Bluetooth, so you can talk to it. But I've got this cord running here, and I installed these little stick-on clear clips for the cord to go up and through and into my little phone mount that I added, which is great because it swivels and um, can turn sideways. So while I'm driving, I can get really great um, photos and videos of whatever I'm seeing while I'm driving and have it all be hands-free um, and have it be charging the whole time it's sitting up there or not, just leave it like that. So that's a feature I absolutely love. Um, other feature I absolutely love is the radio itself because when I bought it, the radio was so poorly tuned with the speakers being like too much left or too much right or front or back or whatever that um, I thought the speakers were shot. I thought they were completely unusable and pretty broken. It sounded so horrible. That's because you, the dash on the original radio it came with was such a dim light that you couldn't read the dash except for in total darkness. Um, and once I could read what I was pressing the buttons on, I realized how out of sync the speakers were, was able to put them back into a normal configuration, and also adjust the bass and the treble. And then I realized, actually, these 24-year-old speakers sound better than some stock speakers in brand new cars. Um, so that's what led me to actually just replace the face of the radio, and the speakers actually sound great. So I love my sound system. I love my phone mount, and I can have the Spotify playing to the radio. 
Um, and those are some things I love about sitting up here in this cockpit. And I'll tell you, the hardest thing, the part-wise, to find to put in this van um, was up here in the visor. And it did not have a mirror. <laughs> and this is the only small flat mirror I could find anywhere in any stores in New Zealand. And if I angle it just right, I can say hi to Doge in the back and ask him how things are going back there. He's a good boy. Now, it's weird because this side did come with a mirror built in. I'm like, that tells me no good over there. So, um, I'm so happy to have my mirror in, and that was the hardest part to find. So I think this about covers the, the front of the van. Um, it does have normal kind of like pockets where I keep maps and stuff on both doors. Um, also, I'll show you while we're here, um, while I'm sleeping, handy reach, I have a stick so that I, when the door's closed, I can hit the lock unlock button from bed. Um, and you have the uh, bug spray there, um, not just for bugs, but also for any potential intruders to uh, spray them. <laughs> so um, also you'll see there's curtains in here. So this curtain here that folds up can slide across the whole thing and enclose the sleeping area at night and keep it dark for me, along with lots of other curtains. Now, let me take you around um, and show you what's on the inside sleeping quarters. And this is one of my other doors that's not correctly aligned, but it's fine for opening, it's just hard for closing. So here's an overview of what uh, the sleeping area looks like in bed mode. It also folds up into a couch mode. Um, so let me talk about what's on top first. Um, of course, the pillows go in whatever arrangement, and when you get in at bed, uh, for bedtime, you put the seats forward so that you got a little bit more headroom, both seats. And um, it can sleep two people, obviously, but I like to um, actually sh take this pad, which is like a squishy memory foam pad, and slide it under what's going on over here is um, a backpacker's air mattress. So I put this blue thing underneath, um, and I've got a memory foam mattress here. So I end up with memory foam mattress, uh, padded mattress, air mattress, and then I get inside the sleeping bag. And when I bought the um, foam mattress here, it was considered a three-quarter mattress, and they had to um, cut a little bit off the foot and uh, like that much off the width. And so that gave me two side like bolster pillows. So I use these kind of one on each side um, as arm pillows to kind of keep me on that narrow mattress there. But when it's in couch mode, these also act as bolster pillows along the back wall so that you can have a little bit more room for, uh, you know, back support, lower back support. So that's kind of the sleeping mode. I tend to um, keep my pajamas in there and a travel pillow. I don't have it set up for travel at the moment. I mean, I don't have all my stuff um, for an overnight at the moment. I've just come down by the beach from my house. Um, but when I am sleeping at night, I use that little bucket up there, which is on a detachable carabiner to um, put, I use it like a bedside table to put like earplugs in it. Um, so it's easy to reach while I'm laying in bed. There's also a fan there that I can slide along that nice piece of driftwood I found. Um, and that's a USB powered fan so that um, I could plug that into the cigarette adapter or eventually I do have a power uh, inverter but I need to buy the battery to hook up the power inverter. So my power inverter has a USB plug on it that I will um, be able to power that fan at night when the van is turned off. I'll be able to power it through the USB on the power inverter. But that's a future um, upgrade that I'm waiting to buy. Um, in the back too, I've also added a clothes drying rack because when you're um, at a campsite and you've got your towels or even just your dish towels from doing dishes, um, you need somewhere to hang them to dry. And so I've actually got one, two, three, four, five uh, clotheslines there. So I can actually dry uh, several things at once. The middle one is a blue bungee cord that's more detachable um, and more sturdy. So in case I need to hang something a little bit heavier, I can hang it on the blue bungee. Um, you'll also see I do have the curtains all the way around. So that curtain draws across and here's two curtains that go across those two windows. And here's another curtain. Um, goes across that window and the back window. So, and these curtains are um, 
what they call thermal lined and blackout. Um, and I've got some Velcro closures in key spots so that I can have a completely enclosed and dark space to sleep. And of course, put the shade on the sunroof and make that dark too. Also cool thing with the sunroof, if it's nice weather, um, I can open it with uh, the dials up there. Um, open the sunroof and underneath here, I've got a screen that I've added uh, strip magnets to. So this screen acts as my bug screen for the moonroof. So once it's open, I just throw the screen up through there and make sure it, it rests on the metal on the three sides. And then when the window's open, the fourth side doesn't magnetize to anything because it's just the glass, but it, the magnet keeps it down so that it doesn't blow away. So I have slept one night already with the screen um, all night on the moonroof, and it was really amazing. Kept everything nice and cool, and um, when the sun started coming up in the morning, I just closed the shade and left the screen out until I was ready to put it all away. Um, so I think that is like the bed area in bed mode. And to put it into couch mode, um, this mattress is actually cut in half. So you just take this board here, which is the only movable piece, is the center piece. Um, and you slide this board up underneath the other board in the back and then you just um, put everything I don't want to do it to get right now because I'm one-handed but um, I put all of this underneath the stuff over there um, but I pull it all onto this uh, front piece so that then the back uh, back half of the cushion is free to go up against the window so then like that whole window ends up being blocked by half of the cushion and then the other half of the cushion ends up on that side. So I end up with like a U-shaped seating area with all of this space in the center as the foot area to sit around. Um, and if you sit just under the moonroof, just that extra like two inches of height is exactly what I need at my height being five foot three to sit upright without slouching. So it's just perfect for my height. Now, let me show you a little bit about what's going on under the bed. There's tons and tons of storage all over on every side. Um, so this one's my laundry basket. There's a bucket there of car cleaning supplies. I'll talk about the kitchen stuff from the other side. In the way back is the toilet because you never use that. It's got some bungee cords securing it. Um, this bin I use for dirty laundry and storing my hiking backpack. This bin is for extra van stuff like cords, extra toilet paper, extra bags and stuff. These two are my essentially my suitcase. So all the bins open like this and they're hinged lids or you can open both sides and take it off. But I've got the packing cubes for all my clothes. Um, I've also got my towels and travel hair dryer if I'm at a campsite that has electricity. So these two things together are essentially the volume of where my clothes would occupy in a suitcase if I was going on a long trip. So that's all the clean clothes and then when they're dirty they go in that other bin for laundry. And this side is where I keep like the bigger outdoors kind of stuff, like the screen. There's two folding camping chairs. There's the um, reflector for the front, which keeps it so um, either like keeps the hot air out or the coolness in, you know, thermal lining basically. Um, and it also gives me more privacy, of course, when I'm camped at night. And um, that's just some shoes. This is quick handy toilet and face cleaning stuff, plus an extra light that I can put around, a super bright LED light that I can just like move around anywhere if I'm looking for something underneath at night. Um, when I'm traveling, I also have like my toiletry kit right there so it's easy to grab. And I usually also have a backpack underneath that'll have like my electronic stuff that I travel with. So that is basically the back area. It does have this like extra shelf here but it's really not built well. I've tried reassembling it and then it just immediately falls back apart when I'm on the road. So one day I'll be rebuilding this. It also has another shelf that rested on that level. I've really not had a need for using this though so that's why I've not bothered rebuilding it. Um, occasionally I set my phone there while I'm doing something but that's much uh, about it. Also super nice at night. Um, 
I've built in, uh, as you can see, maybe from the other side, um, I've built in the fairy lights with a little slide on here. There it is. So the fairy lights just provide like the nice amount of ambiance all the way around so that you can um, have just good light at night that doesn't take up a lot of power and it doesn't require the van battery to actually um, power that and it's a switch that I can reach while laying in bed and turn that off. So I think that's it. I've had to do a little bit of rebuilding work myself with adding some support beams, replacing beams. Um, there was a lot of beams missing and broken when I bought it. And now for the kitchen in the back. This um, trunk lid itself acts as like a rain shield so that when you're cooking you have um, some dry area to stand. Um, it also came with this nice shade which does keep this area a little bit cooler. Although it was weird when I bought it, the shade was sitting on the front dash for some reason doing nothing. Um, it actually belongs there. So let me back up and show you this. So all the kitchen stuff is packed away, but when you are ready to cook something, you kind of, um, you know, assemble it all the way you need for cooking. Um, so first, um, I'll just point out, I have uh, refinished the surface with this dark wood. So anywhere you see dark wood is a vinyl surface that I've refinished and added on myself because this um, was a really rough surface. So when you um, put your towel over it to wipe it, the towel get all like snagged up on the wood. So now it's a nice clean surface. Um, in here I've got another box of tissues in case I need that, either for tissues or wiping something. This is my little camping stove, and it looks like this out of the box. Let me try to focus on that. There we go. So this screws on to the top of that to make kind of a tall burner, but it's a nice propane gas stove burner and it does a good job of cooking and heating up water and stuff like that. Um, also got some baggies, some foil in case you want to grill on a campsite grill without having to clean it up. Um, this is kind of like my hand washing basket, sink basket. I've got hand wipes and also there is a drain stop in the back, like a universal drain stop that also has a, um, what do you call it, like a strainer on it. So that's for the sink in case I need that. But the way the sink works, um, it's really just a mixing bowl. And I plan to replace this at some point because they picked a mixing bowl where the lowest point of the bowl is not the drain. So water kind of like pools around the edge and that sucks. So I'm gonna replace it at some point. But this drain um, goes down into a pipe back here that goes behind and drains into the back of this, uh, what they call the gray water bin, which has to have a vented hose. And this hose is supposed to like stick outside the car, but above the level of the sink. And I'm not really sure exactly how it's supposed to do that. So I've just left it like that. I had to add that myself, it didn't have it. I also had to add this freshwater tank, which is really, um, just like my backup freshwater because my main freshwater tank that I use is this one, which is not so heavy to carry around as the giant 25 liter one. This one's only 10. And I like having this one being portable because it means I can put it anywhere. So I can do that and have running water from my sink, or I can put it over here and wash my dishes in my dish bin or I can put it um, like on the edge of the bumper and just quickly get some water on something dirty here. Um, or I usually will take out my cooler, put that out over here somewhere, and then I can put it on the end of my cooler and wash stuff out there and not have to worry about the wastewater being in my van if it's something that's not actually gonna harm the environment. That also gives me access to my cooking stuff, which are these two bins. So the, the first bin has, um, I didn't know what to do with this, but I thought it was pretty cool because it was the hole I cut out of that. So I'm not throwing it away yet. Um, but what I love about it is this silicone baking mat makes a great place to put a hot dish or um, use it as an actual placement on a picnic table so you know you have a clean surface to eat off a picnic table. I also take this nice cutting board 
and often leave it here so now it's like another shelf or surface to place things as I'm cooking or I can cut on it or I can have my camping chair out and use it as like a lap board for then eating off my lap while I'm done um, cooking. So then inside I've got um, storage if I have leftover food and also um, measuring cups, measuring spoons, lots of cooking utensils, um, and some silicone pot holders down there, some grilling skewers for grills, um, can opener, like just everything that you would really need. And let me try to take that away with only one hand. Um, so underneath here, I've got the bigger stuff that is like um, plates, and I found it's good idea to have both uh, real plates, ceramic ones, and plastic ones. Um, they act as buffer for each other. So when you're driving, when they like bang around, the ceramic one's not against the ceramic one. Um, but also these plasticky ones can't be put in a microwave. So if you are at a campsite that has a microwave, then um, you can use the real plate for that. Also got um, drinking jugs that have lids so bugs don't get in them. Um, got all the basic kind of cookware, strainer, pots, pans, big frying pan at the bottom, so a um, mixing bowl, so everything you need to really make any kind of meal that would be on a stove top. Oop, put my other bin back on top of that one with one hand. I'm also getting bit by bugs all of a sudden. New Zealand's famous sand flies that itch like crazy. Um, so this one is my food pantry. This is just an extra gas thing. On top of my food pantry, I keep my paper towels in the plastic bags so that road dust doesn't get on them. Um, and then inside food pantries like canned food, tea, honey, instant meals, uh, oil, and uh, granola bars. So, um, and then when I have the cooler, um, I put uh, freezer packs in there and can. It's actually a pretty large cooler. Uh, for New Zealand standards anyways, but it's big enough to fit like a tall bottle of wine in here um, and it's uh, wide enough to fit the meat pack so I can buy meat from the grocery store and have that for at least a day or two. And it's a little tricky, but good to know I can do it all with one hand while well, the other hand's on the camera. And um, so I've showed you the dish bin. This can come out and go anywhere. I could take it to a camp um, sink and do my dishes that way so I don't even have to use my own sink if the campsite has a sink. And cutlery is in here, um, knives with a sharpener on it, scissors are really handy to have, and in the back I've got the wine opening tool and the drain stop that it came with. And I've added like the anti-skid um, liner to all of these so they don't move around when I'm driving. And, and then on the side I've got my fruit basket which I um, added a hook to hang that on. It's just like one of the um, baggies from the grocery store. And also from the grocery store I have the reusable grocery bag because they don't give you plastic bags in New Zealand anymore so you have to have your own. So my fruit hangs over there. And on the other side of the kitchen I have what I call like the car garage. It's like the jack for changing the tire, the uh, I don't know what he called that wrench thing for changing the tire, the lug nuts. Um, I've got my gold panning pan and the green shovel for spooning the dirt, the jumper cables, the um, folder full of papers for the van and registrations and service receipts. Um, and then this strap just holds the water bins in place, which is a requirement so that they don't shift around and cause an accident. And I think the only other thing I haven't talked about is my pull-out um, spice rack. And that's just a backup lighter in case this doesn't light, but my burner has a self-lighting starter on it. So I shouldn't ever need that. This cool lantern can hang pretty much anywhere or expand into, well, a lantern. Hold on. Hard to do with one hand. There it is. So that expands out. So lantern. It has... Um, can be any dimness you want if you hold it down. So it can be either lantern mode or flashlight mode. And that is pretty handy to hang anywhere or put anywhere. Um, and oh, love this. This is one of my favorite purchases. The wine glass. Now it has a lid, which is nice, 
Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a good seal on it, so you can't actually drink out of the lid, but at least the lid keeps bugs out. And oh, it has to go in upside down so that it fits better. There we go. So that is um, the gist of what I got back there. A couple little um, hand soap leaves. Um, a mirror in case I need it because I had actually bought that mirror to be my visor mirror until I found the other one that was better. So that is all the stuff back here. I'll have to put these things away in a bit when I have a second hand. And that would be the rear view. And um, I think that concludes the tour of the van. Um, except I did forget to mention that headlamp, which is awesome because from there, um, I can angle it pretty much anywhere in the van. It like flips up and down um, and I can move it sideways so I can illuminate like the whole van just from that. And it also has a bright white, dim, dim white light, but it also has red light. So it has a bright red and a dim red. And what red does at night is it um, allows your pupils to not dilate so you can still see things. And it does not attract bugs because if you turn on the white light at night, all the bugs start coming into that light. But if you just leave it on the red light, then no bugs come in. So that's awesome to have that red light for your van at night. So I think that concludes the tour. And this is a nice sweeping view of New Zealand. There's tons of free campsites all over New Zealand. This is not an uh, overnight campsite, but it is a spot that you can come have a picnic or a walk around during the day. There is a trail that goes all the way around that way and beyond that peninsula. Um, but there's lots of these campsites that are only okay to stay if you have the certified self-contained sticker. Um, so that means I can camp in places that are designated for that. There is one on the far side of this lake all the way at the end. So you can literally camp and have a view just like this um, in several places in New Zealand. And that is the ultimate value of having your own camper van is to be able to go almost anywhere in New Zealand um, and be able to camp overnight for free. Hope you enjoyed the tour.